Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. Today I have a lot to talk about. This is going to be a jammed, packed episode um, and uh, I'll show you if you want. Here's my, um, my show notes. <laughs> this is what I always do. I always write out headlines and then what's going, what I'm going to talk about under each section. And I always number them, and then like this is a potential uh, title for the video, which may or may not change. <laughs> I thought I'd show you that. And this is also how I write my timestamps, which will be down below. Um, I'll go through the video and find when I talk about each thing, and I'll write that time. And that, and then I'll create timestamps that you can use to jump to different parts of the video. So I thought I'd just give you that little like inside uh, look at what I do behind the scenes kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, that's what's up today. Um, yeah, I have, uh, well, I'm just going to talk about my overalls for a quick sec. Um, knitting, spinning, crafting from the past, and some chit chat today. So, um, first I need to mention that the Crafty Bug Sew Along is ending May 31st. And I have posted a FO thread, um, Manda, I'm co-hosting it with Mando Bug Crafts, um, so she's also going to have an FO thread. Um, so just make sure that you get your FO photos posted. If you go over there and Amanda doesn't quite have her thread up, don't worry, she is getting, um, she is going to have that put up real soon. Um, she has just been super busy and I completely understand. So, um, I know she's, she's probably going to have it up today. So, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say is just make sure you get your FO photos, uh, posted and, um, yeah, that's, I think that's it. We had a few people participate. It was really great to see everybody's projects. Um, and I, I had one one person I inspired, I made that um, rope bag and I had one um, person that was inspired to make their own. So that was so cool to see. Um, those are so much fun to make and so quick. Uh, it's this rope purse bag that I made a couple episodes back. Okay, so I just wanted to chit chat a little bit about, well, let me, I'm going to blow right by it. Um, so for, <laughs> I always forget this part. So if you want to find me outside of YouTube, I'm Crafty Garden Sews on Instagram. I have Crafty Garden Podcast on Instagram for video announcements and other things related to the podcast. Um, and I also have Vermont Dye Works, but there's no shop update today. And I only have a couple things in the shop right now. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's it for my social media. The best, best places to find me uh, Crafty Garden Sews on Instagram and Ravelry. Uh, that's where I am most active. So I wanted to chat about my Jenny overalls. I have a whole sewing video dedicated to the Jenny overalls, which I finished recently. And I go, I went into all the details about all the things um, relating to these overalls. I absolutely love them. I'll give, I'll just show you real quick. I'll stand up so you can see my overalls. They're a little wrinkly from sitting, and I've just been wearing them so much. I have been uh, wearing them all the time. I absolutely love them. I, I would just live in, live in them if I could. If I could. Um, so I wanted to mention some sort of like dream sewing. Um, I would like to uh, possibly make another pair, like the exact same thing, overall shorts. But I was thinking in white or black fabric. I think white would look really cute, but I would only want to wear it, you know, in the summertime, um, spring and summertime. Uh, and also white fabric, um, you know, maybe it's uh, more at risk of getting dirty and things. So I don't know. Um, and I also thought maybe a black pair, which would be easier to wear. I wouldn't have to worry about getting them dirty. And, um, and also, uh, I wouldn't feel like I don't want to wear them in the fall. So, um, the whole white after Labor Day thing, like, you think you can fight it, but you can't. You can't. Like, when it comes around, you just, all of a sudden, you don't want to wear your white clothes anymore. 
or like like if I have like white capris, like I just don't wear them. Um, anyways, so <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that, and I have two yards left over from the from this, and I was I haven't looked at the yardage requirements, but I feel like that would be enough to just um, to to do just shorts. So no, don't do the overalls, but just do the shorts. Or maybe that would be enough to do ginger jean shorts, which would be a great way for me to um, finally use my ginger jeans pattern. And it's something I planned on doing back when I bought the pattern was to make shorts. So ginger jean shorts. Um, yeah, I have two yards of that, and I think that might be enough to uh, to do shorts. So I just thought I'd kind of mention some like dream sewing, some things that I've been thinking about. Um, so yeah, maybe. Um, I do have everything I need for the ginger jeans. I have uh, kits that I bought back, way back when I ordered um, fabric and stuff. So yeah, that's it for sewing. Um, if you haven't already, you can check out the, uh, the video that I made for these overalls where I made, uh, I talked about, um, it all I talked about it in depth and I made little videos like mini tutorials where I showed um, like how I put the straps on and different things um, that was a lot of fun I really enjoyed um, I really enjoyed making these I really enjoyed you um, getting to share the journey and uh, and I'm so, I'm so in love with these overalls I really I really want to make another pair like that's how much I love these I'm thinking about buying some more fabric probably black so Okay, on to knitting. Um, I have two things, sort of. I have uh, some dream knitting, too. So I have two things. You guys are going to be shocked. Unless you've been following me on Instagram, you're going to be absolutely shocked. Um, probably. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to quickly mention my socks. I haven't talked about them in a while. And I have did, I've done a little bit of work on them. Last time I talked about them, I had barely turned the heel um, and I did a German short row heel and I did the mini gusset from Mina Phillips um, vanilla sock recipe um, and I thought that these were going to be too tight that they weren't going to fit me uh, but I was sort of jumping the gun on that they were fine once I had knitted a little bit more um, it was perfectly fine uh, they, they actually fit really well the only problem now is that <laughs> is that I need to decrease um, a bunch of this out it's just too big and I don't know if I should show you this my my ankles my foot sorry let me warn you guys my ankles are kind of small um, and this is just way too wide for my ankle so I think I've got to take these off um, pick up stitches you know probably like five or six rows down maybe more um, and decrease a whole bunch of stitches out and just so that it will gradually get skinnier because I, I like I want some of this width down here but I need to quickly decrease so that I want this to hug my ankle and oh I'm gonna make um, little short shorty socks so I don't want um, yeah, I don't want to, I'm kind of just ready to be done with these. And also it's summer, so I'm not going to be wearing tall socks. Um, I just want to get these off the needles so I can start, um, so you'll see in spinning. I want to start a new pair of socks. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to try and just get these off the needles pretty quickly. I think I'm going to, um, yeah, rip back, decrease a bunch and then knit a little bit of ribbing and then try to go for um, ankle socks that just kind of maybe peek out like an inch or so above like my sneakers so um, so yeah that's my plans this is my own yarn if you um, if you don't know this is Vermont Dye Works this is uh, my colorway called Brown Eyed Girl it's self striping this is the only self striping uh, brown eyed girl that I've done and I just made it for myself and um, I currently don't have plans for any more self striping yarn uh, I also sold out of almost all of my yarn right now so um, yeah I so, uh, unfortunately I don't have anything in the shop for you guys right now 
so that's it for my socks. Um, so on to um, this project I've been working on. I've been absolutely loving. It's been knitting up so, so fast. So I've been keeping it in this bag. This is um, a, a bag that I made and it featured, I don't remember what episode, but I did a crafting from the past segment where I talked about this bag. And I used to use this as a purse. So let me show you that. It's a um, really nice size tote. And I used to use it as a purse. Um, it's kind of worn. It's a little dirty and, and it's a little bit worn looking because I made it years ago. Uh, it's quilted. And anyways, I'm using it to house my fern and feather sweater, which I haven't even talked about on the podcast. Last time I showed the yarn in my New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival video. Uh, I showed the yarn that I bought and I talked about my plans, but I haven't even shown the knitting at all. Um, so, uh, so my sweater is in here <laughs> and, um, anyways, before I show you the sweater, I wanted to quickly ask if you guys would like a tutorial on how to make this bag. So it's quilted, um, the chevrons I made, uh, with a technique, uh, a, it's the half square triangle technique where you take two squares of fabric. You sew them in a way, <clears throat> a special way, and then you cut them in a special way, and it gives you four smaller um, squares that are half one color, half the other. Um, and then you can arrange those little squares in a lot of different ways. I arranged them so that I would get chevrons, and they go around the bag like that. Uh, would you like me to put together a tutorial um, with like fabric requirements, uh, different materials you'll need, and do a step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, you'll, you would need some sewing experience and preferably a little bit of quilting experience. Um, but yeah, let me know. And I remember I have the Ravelry group, so if you don't feel comfortable commenting on YouTube, you can always go over to my Ravelry group. I have a general thread, which is for everything, whatever. If you have a question about something that I talk about, something crafty or whatever, if I mention something or if I forget to mention something, that's what that's there for. Um, so anyways, let me know. Would you guys like me to put a tutorial together for this um, so I can show you how to make a bag like this? It's pretty simple. The quilting adds some... Um, uh, it adds some difficulty to it, but the bag itself is just a really basic rectangle bag. And I learned, this was like one of the first things I learned how to sew. Um, really, really simple. And I just buy strap. This strap is, uh, material is from Joann's. Um, so anyways, let me know that because I've been thinking about doing it. And if you guys would really like to see it and maybe make your own, then I will definitely do that because... Um, I've been thinking just about making another one for myself anyways, because I think these are super cute. And you could also do pinwheels, and I could show how you can arrange the squares so that you can get different looks. Okay, so on to my fern and feather sweater. So first I'm going to show it to you on the needles, and then I'm going to try it on for you. So I have made so much progress. I'm about ready to cast off for the body. <laughs> isn't this crazy it's just knit up so fast I can't like you know um oh there goes my other needle hold on this is the needle that I'm knitting it with this is um I don't know if it matters I feel like it's a four or a five I think I have it in my notes um this is from my Addy interchangeable set so these uh pop off this was the first knitting needle set that I I got it for Christmas my husband bought for me for Christmas and I almost never use it because I I'm a loose knitter and I need smaller needles and that set has a range of on the larger size needles so um, I really have only used two or three of the needle sizes the bit larger sizes I never need um, and I just I and I knit mostly with um, with the uh, double zeros 
ones, twos, threes, and fours. And I normally, like most of my knitting doesn't go beyond a size four. So this, uh, this is the exception. This is worsted weight yarn. Uh, this is by Great Bay Wool Works. Um, it's, she has a farm. She has Romney sheep. I believe she has some other sheep as well, but she has Romney sheep. And um, I saw her at New Hampshire, New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. If you want to check that out, find out more details about her, um, or you just want to you know, hear more about that, I talked all about it. So, uh, yeah, I decided I wanted a farm yarn, something that was, um, you know, I wanted a breed specific yarn and I wanted it to be like really small production, you know, farm, <laughs> like f farm to yarn. <laughs> um, and this is exactly what that is. So, uh, this is glitter. This white wool is glitter. The sheep's name is glitter and the gray wool is bonita. So <laughs> this is a, uh, bonita is Spanish for, uh, beautiful and uh, yo hablo un poquito español. I speak a little Spanish um, in school. I was pretty much forced to take Spanish for years. They like uh, elementary school I had it, middle school I had it, high school I had it, and then even um, I went to community college before I went to university. So I was told that I had to take Spanish at uh, community college even though I didn't because I had had it in high school. So I have, I have a lot of Spanish and I don't know how to like speak sentences, but um, I understand more. Yo comprendo mas. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, so I know how to say things like colors, days of the week, the months. I know how to count uh, up to, uh, well, e easily I can count up to 20. I have to think about it when I get to 30. Um, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I just know like words, like I know like names of things, like, like, um, <laughs> you know, just like random things. Like I know a cash register is called Kaha. I don't know why that's stuck with me. Anyway, so this is uh, Glitter and Bonita and, uh, it's my beautiful glitter sweater. <laughs> it's my fern and feather sweater by Jennifer Steingas and... I, uh, so I followed the pattern almost to a T. I made one alteration and that was to put more stitches on the front of the sweater than the back of the sweater. Um, there is two options for the neckline. So she later added another wider neckline and if she didn't add that wider neckline, that would have been a real problem for me. <clears throat> because this is, in my opinion, a very tight, it's too close, it's, it's, I would not want this to be any closer to my neck than it is, um, so, yeah, for me, I went for the second option with the larger neckline, um, I, I guess some people with the original version had trouble with it being too tight, so I have, um, I have a larger head, I also have a larger neck, um, and I do not like things that are super tight on my neck. So I'm glad I went for view, view B. And then, so like I was saying, I did alter the, um, so let's see if I can figure out which, yeah, this is the front side. So, um, I did alter the stitches, um, when I went to divide for the sleeves. So you can see my sleeve hole there. Try to get the other side. Um, I did add, uh, I, I divided so that more stitches would be on the front side of the sweater um, instead of dividing it evenly in half, which the pattern tells you to do. I divided it so that the front had a little more stitches than the back. And um, I think what I'm going to do is when I finish it, or maybe in the next podcast, if I don't finish it, but maybe I finished a sleeve or something, I think what I'm going to do is... Um, is go into detail about exactly how I did that. But I'll save that for either when I finished it or um, or like maybe the next one because I have so much to talk about today. Um, but I will try, I'll also try to get it the notes that I took on how I did that on 
uh, my Ravelry page for this, which I need to update. <laughs> okay, so real quick, I just want to show you what it looks like on. So I'm going to change real quick and show you that. Okay, I'm back. Uh, here's the Fern and Feather on, and I just think it looks so gorgeous. Um, this is sort of a cream, This uh, the glitter yarn is uh, sort of this cream, I think it, it looks like, um, like, like buttermilk kind of a white. It's not a true white. It's kind of a cream colored white. Um, and this gray is really pretty. And surprisingly, I really, I don't really love wearing gray. I, I've talked about it before. Sometimes I think it washes me out, but I think this is, um, with the, with the warm white, it looks really pretty together. So, um, yeah, this is what it looks like on. I'm going to stand up I put it over my overalls, like folded the bib down, so you guys are going to laugh at me. So <laughs> I just folded the bib down for my overalls. <laughs> but this is, because uh, I didn't want to take them off. So this is how long it is now. And uh, so I think it's more than long enough for me to go ahead and start the ribbing. So I have to count the stitches and make sure it's a multiple of four. But I'm going to do um, two by two rib, I think. And, and I might do one by one, but I, I kind of want to do a two by two. And I think I'm just going to do a plain um, a, pl a plain hem for the bottom of the sweater. Um, let me show you. I have a ton of this uh, Bonita yarn left, this gray yarn. It's a ton of this left. So, by the way, this is Romney. And I am not, I don't feel like super scratchy, like I have to rip this off. It's surprisingly soft for Romney. And um, I think it, this is going to be a little bit more of a heavyweight sweater. Uh, it's worsted weight, so I'm probably going to want to wear, like in the winter, I could wear um, a long sleeve shirt or something under this. But right now I'm only wearing like a little camisole. So, or tank top if you prefer, but, um, yeah, that's all I'm wearing under it. And I think it's, it's not merino soft. Let's get that out of the way. But it's, I think this is too scratchy for some people, but for me, um, I think I'm going to be okay, um, either with a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt or, um, maybe if I don't want to be that hot, cause I do, t I tend to run hot. So, um, like a little camisole underneath would be good. Um, so yeah, anyways, I have all of this extra gray and I feel like I need to use more of it, but I, I think like putting gray here, I don't know if I want to, so some people, um, some Icelandic patterns have gray, um, not gray, excuse me what am I trying to say, have color work at the bottom of the sweater. Uh, I could do that. Uh, it, the pattern doesn't call for color work on the cuffs or the, um, I've got like a bunch of boo-boos by the way, which I'll talk about. There's something in the background right there. It's the reason why I have a bunch of boo-boos. So, <laughs> um, anyways, you could put color work on the cuffs or, and at the bottom of the hem of the sweater. Um, and I have enough that I could probably do both, maybe. Um, I've been thinking about doing the cuffs because when I did the, um, when I knit my, my fin sweater, the, uh, Arboreal by Jennifer Steingass, I designed my own little color work, um, border for the cuff. Uh, so I could just use that exact same design because it flows with, it fits with this right here. So I could do that right here at the cuff and I could potentially do it at the bottom, but I don't know, is that going to be too much? I mean, some color work, Icelandic color work sweaters have it on the bottom and the, and the sleeves. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I add color work? Because I have so much of this left and I don't know what else I would use it for. So, um, I don't know how much I want to have two worsted weight Romney sweaters, you know, so I don't think I'm going to be buying any more, but, um, even though I, I would like to make another one of these cause they're so fun and they knit up so fast. Um, but I would want to do it either in hand spun or a different breed just so I can experience different things. So 
but I don't know. What do you think? Should I do color work? I, I'm thinking like definitely on the cuffs, but maybe I should just go with the plain hem. I don't know. Okay. So, um, I have one more skein of the sissy. This is all that I have left for the body. I think I should be able to squeeze out the ribbing out of this. And then, um, I have one for this sleeve, and then I have another skein over there somewhere um, that I haven't uh, caked up yet. So um, I should have one for this sleeve and one for this sleeve, and that should be more than enough. Um, so who knows? Maybe I'll do them two at a time. But I can't do the color work two at a time. That's that's way too much going. Anyway, okay, so, so this is it for knitting. I'm going to change back out of this, um, and I have some dream knitting before I talk about spinning. So for dream knitting, I have been dying to play with the other sweater quantity of yarn that I purchased at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival for this sweater. And I wanted to quickly mention it because um, this is the Winterfell, Winter, <laughs> Winter, Winterfell sweater by um, Skein Deer Knits. And this was uh, previously had a different name there's a whole story behind that if you don't already know. Um, this is a pattern by, yeah, Ellie uh, Skandier Knits. She has a podcast and she talked all about why she had to change the name and everything. And she just asked that people um, kind of share the news that this pattern has a new name. So I wanted to do that and um, I, I just wanted to mention that uh, as soon as I, I've been dying to play with this, so this is the yarn that I got at um, New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. I already had this bag. This is a bag from Green Mountain Spinnery. I already had this bag from previous, um, it's a yarn haul that I did a year, a year ago. Uh, so I really want to make this sweater. I'm just gonna do it in two colors. I've already chatted about it, but I have been dying to play with this and I'll walk by it and just kind of and I'll tell you guys this because I know you do it too. I just walk by it and then I kind of pick it up and then I just kind of pet it a little bit <laughs> because I'm not allowed to play. I'm not allowed to knit this. I'm not allowed to cake this up. I'm not allowed to pull out needles and swatch. I'm not allowed to do anything other than lovingly look at it until I finish my um, <laughs> fern and feather sweater which is knitting up so fast, it's um, not a problem. But uh, I would, I'm just dying to cast on this sweater. So this is gonna be my sweater. It's this, this is kind of a, um, it's a light brown with hints of gray. It does lean brown for sure. Um, it's kind of like, kind of got a taupe vibe, I think. Um, and what's really cool is that, uh, I think it's funny too, it matches uh, one of the Shetland fleeces that I bought, one of the lighter colors in this fleece that I bought, like almost perfectly matches this color. So, and I'll show you, wait, I'll show you. So here's gray and here's this. You see how this really leans brown compared to the gray? So I feel like that really shows that this, it's kind of a taupe color. So, yeah, this sweater is gonna be mostly this color with white for the color work. So everywhere there's white, I'm gonna have this white. So I just thought I'd mention that in the new name change. Um, and yeah, just, I have just been dying to play with these, but I can't do it until I finish my um, fern and feather, so. So that's my dream knitting right now. So uh, that's all for knitting. I have some spinning to talk about. I have quite a bit. Well, I have a little bit of spinning to talk about and like fiber prep. So I just want to check my notes. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is my opposing two ply, which I finished and I have already split for two at a time socks, which is another reason why I really want to get those socks off the needle. Needles. Um, let's scooch up. Look, it matches my shirt. <laughs> so this is an opposing two ply it's um unicorns by created by lcb which i purchased sometime last year uh and yeah i spun these for my hand spun box of socks that i'm hosting um uh my ravelry group um so 
You can join at any time, by the way. It's a year-long uh, hand-spun box of socks. Uh, right now, it is just a spin-along, knit-along, where we spin our own yarn for socks and then knit our socks. And it's just a place to gather and to share with each other. There's no prizes or anything right now. I have debated in the past um, whether or not that's something I want to do. Uh, I'm still thinking about it and how that would work and everything. Um, but right now it's just a place for us to to spin along and knit along together. So yeah, this is a opposing two ply. So my last pair of hand spun socks was the uh, opposing three ply. And I have some photos of this skeined up. Um, so yeah, uh, my last yarn was the opposing three ply, and um, the reason why I did the opposing three ply was uh, it's supposed to add more strength, um, more elasticity, and um, make for more durable socks. So when I went to spin the second uh, bobbin, I decided to spin an opposing two ply which I decided just as I was about to put the, the new, I put the new bobbin on and I decided I'm going to do an opposing two fly. <laughs> and so, um, that's exactly what I did. So one was spun S, one was spun Z. Uh, so one was spun clockwise, one was spun counterclockwise. And, um, and then they were applied together. And my one tip, for doing this, which I think is a big, it's a really great tip. I feel like the reason why I was able to apply this so smoothly and I didn't have trouble with it at all was because I, the first bobbin that I spun rested for quite a while while I spun the second bobbin. And then when I went to ply, I made sure to ply in the direction of the first bobbin. So I was plying in the direction of the bobbin, which was allowed to rest. So it didn't have as much energy um, in it as the as it would if I had just got it off the wheel. It would have a lot of tension and energy um, twist. Uh, so when you know when it, when you let the bobbin rest, some of that relaxes. Um, so and a lot of people don't ply yarn until they've let their bobbins rest for that reason. Um, I almost never do that, but um, let's see. I think I have a spinner's control card for this. So there's my spinner's control card. This is my um, spinner's control card box. <laughs> I'll explain this in a few minutes. So um, I just keep all of my spins. So there's my fin fleece for my um, hand spun sweater which just throw it on the floor. Okay, so this is uh, my spin for this. So it just says, it's Rambouillet Merino and Gold Stellina Fiber from Created by LCB. The name is Unicorn. It has Gold Stellina. She currently has, I just happened to follow her on Instagram, so I know she, happen, she has this with uh, Silver Stellina right now. I don't know what the fiber is, though. Um, it's an opposing two ply. I spun it on my Lindrum, which you can see right here. The ratio is 17 to one. So my fastest setting, which let's turn this, which is what I'm currently using for this spin, which I'll talk about in a second. So 17 to one, um, applied S and Z, uh, Z and S, and then I applied it at 17 to one. So the first direction I applied was Z, which is clockwise. So um, I don't know if that's backwards when you're watching, whatever. So clockwise is Z and then counterclockwise S. So the first one I spun was clockwise. And then when I went to ply, I plied it clockwise in the direction of the first bobbin, which was allowed to rest. And I really think that made a huge difference <clears throat> Excuse me. I have some photos of when I, um, of, of how I had the plying set up, which I either will insert now or have already inserted. So, yeah, and I felt like it was easy to ply because of that. I feel like if you did it the other way around, it would, 
it would have a lot more energy and a little too much twist and it might like cause some difficulty plying. So I did calculate the grist, which is borderline heavy finger heavy fingering. Um, and I have 108 grams and I stapled this uh, card on the back. So that's just from created by LCV. So that's my card. I haven't put um, any of the yarn on there yet, which I'll do later. So um, yeah, that's it for for the spin. Um, I am hoping to cast on socks pretty soon, but I got to get those uh, socks off the needles. And like I said, I'm just going to do shorty socks. So hopefully they will be done really quick. So I'm super excited to see how this knits up. These are not going to be matchy matchy socks. They, um, as far as like, they will stripe, but my stripes won't match. So um, it's got some barber pulling and it's actually mostly barber pulled. Um, but yeah, they're not going to perfectly match. Um, I think they will maybe have similar sections. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to um, go for just fun socks. I'm not going to try to do um, matchy matchy. So th that's it for that. And I have a new spin, which I've kind of showed already. Um, so this is uh, a Cormo cross from Taylor Owen of the Thread to Men podcast. And I have a little bit of the fiber right here. I have a whole bunch more of it over there. But, um, so this is a little bit of the fiber and let me see, I have a card for her, um, for this fiber that I wrote ages ago when I first got it. So it's a Cormo, Cormo cross, uh, from, uh, so she bought it at Maryland Sheep and Wool in 2017, uh, from Peggy Howell and I want it from Taylor Owen. She says it's a natural gray. But to me, this is definitely brown. Um, so, dyed with pokeberry, collected on a bike run through Herring Run Park in Baltimore City, combed on Valkyrie double row extra fine combs. So that uh, is my card for this spin. And yeah, this is the fiber that I won from Taylor Owen. Uh, so you can see in this one right here, it has a pink... Uh, a warm toned pink tinge to it and here's one that doesn't really have as much pink tone to it so there's some variation this is really really soft and I love how this smells um I'm just gonna snip it I'm sorry yeah it just smells um it has this kind of almost sweet scent to it and I wonder if that's from the pokeberry it doesn't smell sheepy um, it smells um, clean and kind of just uh, pretty. So I think that must be from the pokeberry. So I started spinning it. I'm spinning it on 17 to 1 ratio, which is my fastest uh, whirl speed. And um, I am not spinning this technically. I'm not, I didn't create a, um, I don't have a sample so that I'm spinning consistently. I not using my spinner's control card from hip strings. I am just spinning for the love of spinning. I'm going to try and keep the consistency um, just uh, naturally on my own without trying too hard for it to be perfect. Um, this is going to be more of a relaxing, enjoyable spin. And I'm going to use this yarn in my crochet great granny square. So I haven't touched my Great Granny Square Blanket in quite a while, um, but uh, I think, you know, I just needed to, I worked on it so hard, so fast, and this grew like overnight um, into this, this blanket. I could stop now, but I have a bunch more yarn, a hand spun. So this is entirely made out of hand spun, if you're new and you don't know. I'm posting the uh, Great Granny Square crochet along all year. Uh, I happen to be using um, hand spun. This is entirely made out of hand spun, all spun by me. Uh, and so I was thinking that I would add this to that, um, to the blanket. So I don't think it'll be the next color. Um, currently I have this uh, dark purple right on the edge, 
Um, I think I'm going to use some other yarn that I've had waiting to put in there and maybe add a few more rows and then I'll use this because I have nearly five ounces of this. So that should be um, able to take me pretty far. I, I should be able to make this a little bit bigger and then use um, some of this. So I'm pretty excited about that and to finally be able to use this because I've been wanting to do something with it but just not quite knowing what to do. So um, I think this is going to be perfect, uh, the perfect thing to do with it because I absolutely love my great granny square blanket. Um, my cat loves it too. He's always sleeping on there. Um, <laughs> it's his like favorite spot for a nap. Um, so I absolutely love my blanket and um, there are so many memories and so many cherished things and there's some of my very first um, wheel spun, hand spun yarn at the very center, some of my, my very first yarns in that blanket and um, so uh, it's, it's a cherished, it's already cherished blanket, it's not even finished yet. So <laughs> uh, that's what I'm going to do with this and I think it's the perfect thing to do with it. So yeah, that's my uh, current spin. And um, I also have some fiber prep that I'm going to, sorry about that, that I'm going to chat about a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to save all of the details for um, my fleece to FO series. So I'm just going to show and chat a little bit, but not go into like all of the details. So um, first up, I need to talk about a new acquisition, which has kind of been showing off in the background. Um, so I purchased recently these Valkyrie, um, they're the extra fine uh, double row combs. And I purchased these online, not that it matters, but I, I purchased these online. Um, I think the place is called Milky. It's this online website. Uh, they only had one one pair in stock. So I bought, um, yeah, I bought the combs and then I bought the base that goes with it. So this is the base. It's just a piece of wood and then um, the, oops, the combs have a hole in them and they sit, um, they go down onto the hole, uh, the, this metal piece goes through that hole and then these two bars just kind of keep it in place. These um, are very, very, very sharp. That's why, hold on a second. That's why I had this on top of there. This was, um, I saved these from the shipping packaging. Um, and I just, when I'm not using them, I put these on top. I've, I've been thinking about maybe sewing some sort of cover. I know that um, some people sell covers on Etsy, I think. Um, but I could probably sew my own. But for now, I'm just putting these cardboard things on top of it. Um, and I have stabbed myself quite a few times. Uh, I cut my wrist right there. It's just a little scratch. And I have a couple pokes on my knees. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I these are very, very sharp. And, yeah, you have to be very careful. I am very aware about how close this is to my face. Um, when I am combing, I'm very aware of like getting up and sitting down and moving around them because you're like two seconds away from impaling yourself on these things. They are very dangerous. So you gotta be really careful. Um, but I have been using them and I feel like, uh, it was super easy to just get started and, um, and start combing and making combed top right away. They're pretty, really easy to use. Um, so just going to put them back over here where they're safely out of the way. Um, so yeah, I did recently purchase those and I've started making combed top. So I'm going to grab um, some fiber that I've started combing and I'm going to show you that. So I've started combing my uh, fleeces, my two fleeces. Both are now washed uh, and dried and ready for combing and they've been sorted for the most part. Um, they're neither, I haven't washed all of either of the fleeces. I've only washed the nicer stuff, which I've pulled out, um, for making a garment or something. So like I said, uh, I'm not going to go into all the details and like plans and things yet. Cause I think I'm going to put it in my 
Fleece to Epo series and just start a new a new um, project for my Fleece to Epo series. So uh, I think I'll probably do combing videos and all of that, hopefully. So anyways, I have uh, just a couple things, different colors that I want to show you. So I split my first fleece, Layla, uh, that I got at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival into three colors. The fleece naturally has some variation in it and I decided that I wanted to separate the colors so that um, I would be able to have blended colors that I didn't want I didn't want my yarn to vary like my thin fleece um, I learned that even though I had separated the colors um, there was still some variation within each color group and uh, not all of that was perfectly blended which was fine because I was doing a faded sweater and uh, that looked good and um, with sort of a faded look it was what I was going for but with this I I really don't want to have yarn that I don't want it to look it's not going to be a faded look I want to have really well um, combined colors that you know I don't want streaks of darker colors in the middle of lighter colors I want to try and keep the colors separate and blend them really well so the first fleece I divided into three colors so here's the lightest color that um, I'm running out of like larger bags so I had to pull out a ziploc bag but um, so I've combed all of the lightest color I'm not going to show all of it but this is the lightest color and this is all of the waste that I have from this. And I think I have just, I'm just shy of four ounces with this lightest color. Um, and this is all of the waste from the comb. So combing creates waste. And I'm saving it. I might drum card it. I might save all of the waste and drum card it and then do something else with it. I don't know. Um, it's still pretty nice stuff. It's just really short. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just saving that. So this is the lightest color and then the medium color is what I'm working on right now. So here's my bag of combed top for the medium color. Um, I have like a whole bunch more of these sitting over there. I just, I ran out of like big plastic bags to put them in. So um, yeah, I combed almost four ounces. It's, it's like three and three eighths. No, I don't remember. I no, it was 400 grams. I don't remember. So I, I combed a whole bunch of this um, lightest color. And then, so I'm working on, all of this is done. All of the lightest color is done. So now I'm working on the medium color. And I've combed one of the darkest, the darkest color. So this is the medium color. I have the most of the medium color. Um, this is the waist that I have. I don't want to mix these up just in case. They are very similar in color, but slightly different. And I know if I have that lightest color in the middle of the medium color, it would you'd be able to see that in a in a knitted garment. Um, even though they are really close in color, they're different enough that you would be able to see it visually. So I definitely want to separate them. So this is um, all of the medium color that I have to comb. Um, and I'm finding that combing is going by really, really fast. So um, let's show you some of that out of the bag. So this is the medium color. And yeah, this is the bag of the medium color that I've combed. And this is the waist that I have so far. There'll be a lot more of that, but um, like I said, I think I'm gonna try and do something with the with the waist because it still feels really nice. It's still soft. It's just short. So I could drum card it or something. So here's my combed top. It gets a little skinny at the end there because I try to save. I don't want to like have a huge amount of waist. So I try to save some of the slightly. It's like it's not the shortest, but it's not as long as this. See how it starts to taper? It's because it's these um, the staple length is getting a little bit shorter. So I just wrap this around my hand and create a little nest. And this is so soft and very like light fluffy cloud. It's so, so, it's so nice and really beautiful to draft. 
Okay, so that's the medium color. And then I have a teeny tiny bit of dark, a darker color. And I have some more of this that I didn't wash, which I'm going to have to wash. So I can try and maybe have enough to um, make a darker colored skein. So here's the darkest one. This is the little bit of, um, I only combed one of these, so this is the only one I've combed out of the darker section. So here's some of the wool from the darker section. So I'll show you the three together. So this is all from one fleece. So here's the dark, here's a medium, and let's see, here's a light. So yeah, you can see that. So there's the dark, the medium, and the light. So this is going to be three different colors. I'm probably going to have, um, there's so much of the medium, I'll probably have at least two skeins of the medium, um, one skein of this, and then maybe some sort of mini skein of the darker color, because there's really not a lot of this. Um, but yeah, how pretty is that? This is all from Layla, the first Shetland fleece that I bought at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. So yeah, that's, this is Layla. So let me put these back together so I don't get these mixed up. Um, and then I bought a second Shetland fleece at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. And uh, I've already played with that a little bit too. So that fleece is, almost all of it is this color. There are a couple spots that are slightly lighter than this and slightly darker, but for the most part, it's all this really gorgeous chocolate cinnamon color. It has a, um, sort of a red uh, leaning brown. So I kind of think of it as like a chocolate cinnamon color. Um, I think there's some spots that are a little bit darker than this and some spots that are a little bit more, um, a little lighter. So uh, I probably, if I really want to do a good job, I'm going to have to pick out the lighter spots so I don't have light spots in the middle of my yarn and stuff which I don't want, but, so this is the second fleece, and um, I have combed just one little nest of combed top, because I wanted to see what it looks like. So here's um, it in lock form, washed and clean and dry, and here's it um, combed into a little nest, and I can carefully take this apart, show you what that looks like. So there's my second fleece, and isn't it gorgeous? I really, really love this color. So I have a couple ideas for um, a sweater that I want to make, but I'm going to save all of that, like I said. I'm going to save all of that detail and stuff for the Fleece to FO series. And then there's a little bit of waste. And I calculated the waste from the first combing that I did, the lightest color. Um, I calculated uh, this out of the total weight and then figured out how much waste I had and it was roughly 12%. So I'm going to guess that I'll have 10 to 12% waste um, so I can kind of guesstimate how much yarn I will have um, and the weight of, of the fiber that I'll have to spin. So, um, I just, it was a little bit nerdy that I did that, but <laughs> I just was like, like, wonder exactly how much waste I'm getting. <laughs> it was like approximately 12%. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to put this all away. So that's it for fiber prep. And, um, yeah, my, my new combed top. I think I'm doing such a great job, by the way. Like, I'm brand, I have brand new combs, never combed before. And I've already gotten so much of this done, it's crazy. So I can't wait to um, I'll have good like good photos and like get a good visual with all of the combed top together, like I did with the thin fleece where I had all of my um, where I had all of my roll ags laid out. I'm gonna have all of my combed top nests laid out. <laughs> so okay, uh, let's see. I have some crafting from the past and then some chit chat. So for crafting from the past today, I found this um, mug rug that I made. I think I made this um, probably uh, close to seven years ago because uh, this year will be seven years in our house. And um, when we 
were about, about to move in, I wanted to make like um, cotton dishcloths and um, different things to have for the house. And so this is a little stained, but I'm gonna show it to you anyways. It's really cute. I use it as a coffee uh, mug rug, and I have definitely spilled coffee on it before, uh, probably a few times. But um, yeah, so this was a little mug rug. It's crocheted. I don't know what the pattern is. I don't think, um, I think I did have a Ravelry back then, but I didn't really use it. So not definitely not like I do today. So I don't even know what this pattern is. I'm pretty sure I just found it on Google. I don't even know if I found, I don't even know if I was using Pinterest at the time. So, um, so yeah, this is just a little mug rug. It's, um, really cute, uh, cotton fabric, uh, cotton fabric, cotton, uh, yarn. It's the, um, the, it's just that cotton stuff that you can get at like Joann's or Michael's or, um, it's a dishcloth cotton. And so this one was, has this white and kind of salmon-y pink, uh, and brown. And then this just, um, sort of light blue turquoise color, um, I used on the outside and then you crochet into it and create this these like sort of um, I don't know I want to say spokes but they're like uh, petal shapes so it looks like a flower and I wish I knew what the pattern uh, is but yeah I think um, it was so long ago that I don't remember so um, I think if you if you were to really hunt around for crochet um, mug rugs or crochet dishcloths, you'd probably be able to find it. Um, really cute, not too hard to make. Um, it has like almost uh, granny square little clusters. Um, so yeah, this is really cute. I should probably make more of these. They're really cute. Uh, so that's it for crafting from the past. Probably made this um, six and a half, seven years ago, pushing seven years. So <laughs> yeah, that's my crafting from the past segment. So for chit chat, I have a couple things to chat about. Um, I have two books that I want to mention. One that I had mentioned that I finished reading and I wanted to tell you how that went. And then um, I have a old book that I'm going to reread. It's not that old, but it's, it's one I've read before. So for, uh, <laughs> so for a recap, I talked about um, wanting to read this book. It's from a series that I've been reading for years. I recently read Tower of Dawn, which is the latest book that's come out for the series. And I really did enjoy that. I was surprised at how much I really enjoyed it and loved it. And then I decided that I finally need to read this. This is a prequel. Um, it's a Throne of Glass no novella. So it's by Sarah J. Uh, Mass. And... Uh, yeah, it's a prequel to the series. So if you read the first book, um, you already find out what happens in this story, sort of. Um, and parts of this story are mentioned in other books. So, like, there's this um, whole pirate thing. I, I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything. That's mentioned in this book, so you learn more about the background by reading this. Um... It's not necessary to read this book, and so that's kind of why I put off reading it. But um, I did really enjoy it. I did not enjoy the ending, but uh, I, I knew what was going to happen the entire time. I was very aware of um, a certain character's imminent despi uh, despise <laughs> demise. <laughs> um, because the, the very first series gives that away. So... Um, I knew what was going to happen in here, but I still didn't <laughs> like reading it. So, um, yeah, this is very sad, like, leaving the story off at the end of this. But um, I'm glad I read it. I did really enjoy it. Once I had gotten into it, I was really loving reading it up until the end when all of the bad stuff happens. So <laughs> I just wanted to mention that um, I had because I had talked about this a few episodes ago. And um, so I wanted to recap that, that I'm, I'm glad I read this. And so um, I'm wanting to read another book, and I don't have any um, new books that have come out that I have or anything um, 
this one does have uh, the next book in the series has come out and I haven't purchased it um, and I decided that what I'm gonna do is reread the last book which is this one so this is Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes um, this is the Fallen Kingdoms series and the first book was um, Fallen Kingdoms so uh, yeah there's the books the books on the back there just trying to show you the um, the series so the newest book has come out and I wanted to reread this and I thought I'd just mention that this is a series that I've really enjoyed reading and I just don't remember all of the details because it's been a while since I've read this so I think what I'm gonna do is reread this and then once I finish it or get really close to finishing it I'm going to maybe buy the next book because I already have this whole series so I think I got the first book for Christmas a few years ago or something. So yeah, I really enjoy the series. I thought I would just mention this is going to be my uh, my little bedside reading. I like to read right before bed normally. So Okay, that's it for the books. I only have one other thing to mention. Um, I found out that I am... So I have been... I've mentioned it before... I am a, well, I feel like a baby martial artist, but I am a martial artist. I do train, um, so it's a, it's sort of like Aikido, if you know what that is. Um, I also have been doing mixed martial arts, which is um, kind of like kickboxing and boxing. Um, and I've been doing grappling, which is like wrestling. So if you don't know um, anything, you probably you probably know of wrestling, but you maybe don't know of grappling like jujitsu. Um, so we do grappling without a gi. Although I do have a gi top, but we we grapple without a gi. A gi is just sorry. Uh, a gi is just the um, the it's the the clothes that you wear. We have special clothes that we wear. So um, your gi top. Um, if you grapple with, this is way too much detail for most of you guys. Anyways, so, so we grapple without geese. Yeah, I don't know that you needed to know that. But jujitsu, you would wear a gi and you'd have a belt. And the grappling is a little bit different um, if you have a gi and if you don't have a gi. But at any rate, um, so I have been training pretty hard um, and learning so much new stuff. And... Um, boxing and kickboxing has been so much fun. I've learned that I love kicking um, and I'm pretty decent at it so <laughs> for a newbie <laughs> and then um, and I've really been enjoying grappling and I've been getting bruises so it grappling is a pretty tough sport. Um, it's pretty aggressive it, it can be I mean um, there's it's, it depends on who you are and who you who, who you work with some people. Um, are really aggressive and some people not so much. Um, I tend to be pretty aggressive. <laughs> so, um, I like, I like it. I really enjoy it. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's very physical and very, um, I don't know. It's cool. It's cool to do. It's a cool thing to learn. It's also a very handy skill. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I'm surprised I don't have bruises because, um, I have been, uh, getting bruises. I have, I do have a bruise on my chest, <laughs> um, a big yellow bruise like that on my chest. <laughs> and, and I've had a couple bruises on my arms, um, from grappling cause you get grabbed and poked and stuff and whacked. <laughs> um, but anyways, I wanted to mention that I'm super excited. I just found out I have been training for almost three years now, um, in Aikido. It's a, uh, it's Aikijutsu, but uh, it's very similar to Aikido, and um, I am getting put up for my next um, my next rank. It's going to be, we don't have colors, we have a white belt. You get red stripes on your white belt, um, so you get up to three stripes on your white belt. Then you go to uh, brown belt. So I am going to be getting my third stripe on my white belt, and then my next rank will be brown belt. My husband is a brown belt. We train together. So my husband is a brown belt and he's also being put up and he's going to be a third stripe. For some reason, our school jumps from one stripe to three stripes. So once you become a, a brown belt, you go from just brown belt to a three stripe. 
I'm not sure why we skip and we don't do two stripes. Um, I'm not sure the exact reason for that, but uh, so he will be a three stripe on a brown belt. And then once um, he finishes that, he will be a black belt. So that's pretty cool. That's really exciting for him, but it's also really exciting for me because that means I am just one step away. Once I finish this, I'll be just one step away from my brown belt, which has been a goal of mine. It's been a long-term goal of mine to hit brown belt. When I hit brown belt, I'll have to make a new goal. I'll have to make my goal to be a uh, black belt. <laughs> Not that the colors matter. They just, the, the belt is just an outward symbol for what you've done. So um, the colors don't matter. The, the stripes and stuff don't really matter, but it's just a outward way to signify um, the training that you've had and the knowledge that you've gained. So, yeah, like I said, I will have um, been training for nearly three years. Um, so I will have my, my third stripe. <laughs> so that kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, it just signifies the, the, my level in the program and it's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. Um, I don't care too much. Uh, I don't want it to, it's not really about, about the belt or the stripes. For me, it's about loving what I do and the, and the, what I learn and the skills that I develop and just, I, it's just, I enjoy, um, I enjoy, I enjoy the art form. So. Anyways, I just thought I'd share that. I've been, that's like been really exciting news. We just found out and then we were riding on the way home. And so immediately we're like starting to train for Shi'ai. And so we're like, book work, book work. We're going to do book work. We're going to go through our page. We're going to make sure we know everything. Um, we were just like immediately game plan, prepare for Shi'ai. And then, <laughs> and then on the way home, I was like, Hey, we haven't even celebrated. Like, we haven't even taken a minute to realize, hey, we're getting put up for Shi'ai. <laughs> like, hey, this is something exciting. We should celebrate. <laughs> because we were just like, we just know what we're in for. Shi'ai can be super intense and you're, it's, you're being tested. So we just went straight into like, <laughs> like, like a preparing mode. <laughs> so we didn't take a minute to be like happy that we're, <laughs> that we're um, getting put up for our next drink. So. So that's pretty uh, cool. It's going to happen this next month. It's going to be, they said it's going to be in June. They haven't announced when and everything like that. So um, I don't know. I probably won't talk too much about it. I feel a little bit weird talking about it, but, and sharing it with you guys. I don't mind. Um, there, there's some things that I share and some things that I don't share. And I, I don't really mind sharing the, this part of me. Um, it's another thing that I love to do. So, um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm bragging and stuff, but it's just something that I love to do and I want to share it with you guys. So I thought I'd chat about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.